So today I'm diving into the new Juice World album, Legends Never Die, which is his first posthumous release since his death in December of 2019. And I just kind of want to give you guys kind of where my head's at before I tune into this thing and give it a listen for the first time ever. These posthumous rap albums so far lately have been like not great. Sometimes, very rarely, they make a good contribution to the legacy of the artist after their passing. The family of Little Peep, for example, has done a great job. But more often than not, these are hastily thrown together compilations of unfinished tracks that the artist had laying around, left over. You throw some features on them, maybe get some key producers in there. It doesn't really sound like what the artist probably wanted to leave behind. So more often than not, these things are kind of a cash grab. So I don't want that to be my mindset going in, but I can't help it. What with uh, everything that's been going on, we've lost so many young rappers and artists lately, and their first projects out the gate after their passing have been less than spectacular. The news around Juice World's death after he passed was that he recorded something like 2,000 songs. So there's plenty for the family and the label to work with. So maybe we'll get some good gems here. This particular album has 21 tracks. We're gonna take it track by track, and here we go. Okay, I'd say the album's off to a good start with this first track, Conversations. The intro track is just a uh, kind of a motivational uh, series of sound clips from Juice World to kick off, kind of set the vibe for the album. This first track, Conversations, great Ronnie J beat right out the gate. Uh, trademark Juice World lyrics about dealing with uh, his mental issues and his anxiety, his self-worth. I wouldn't say the hook or the melody is really stand out here. It's not incredibly catchy, but the beat propels the song and it's a good kickoff to the album. I've been in our ships, it's about to go down no Titanic, Titanic. One thing I find cool about this album is that the features don't come in for like the first several tracks. It's just straight juice world. It's like he's making his statement solo by himself before the features come in. So these first few tracks are just juice, which is really cool. Unfortunately, I think this track, Titanic, maybe should have been left on the cutting room floor. It sounds like he wanted to write a song called Titanic. He just kind of built the song around that, the lyrics. Same type of lyrical content you're used to from Juice. But he just kind of shoehorns a, a reference to a ship going down like Titanic. And I don't think it really fits. I don't think it's very catchy. Early on in the album, a pretty weak track. All these pills were my pride. Married to my highs. You may kiss the bride. This song, Bad Energy, I would say is like trademark Juice World. It talks a lot about his demons and how he copes with them. His need for substances to help him get back on the level. And talks about how he wants to give his girl the world. Dealing with fame and all the things that come with that. Juice has always been a really plain spoken lyricist and I think that shines through here. The hook is very strong here, the production's great. Day Trip is one of the best producers out there right now. So yeah, I think that Bad Energy, really strong track. Yeah. I know that the truth is hard to digest. Yeah. Five or six pills in my so Righteous is the first big single that they pushed for this album. I'm sure you and me and everyone else has heard this song like a bunch on their Spotify playlists or on the radio. Uh, it was a big hit, and I think it kind of is a good cohesive theme for this album so far. It's a really good song. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it because it's not really new to me, but that it's just trademark juice. Just very like straightforward, plain spoken lyrics about what he's going through mentally. Righteous is a great track. Baby, I've been on the run, but I will never run from your love. If you feel my so Blood On My Jeans has a lot of violent imagery which is unusual for Juice. I'm not sure if he's done it before. He probably has, but uh, it's the first time I'm hearing it on this album. I'd say the way that Juice delivers his lyrics is usually very somber. It doesn't really come across as tough. It doesn't really sound very convincing. There doesn't seem to be any type of refrain or hook in this song, which I don't think helps it any. Some of the lyrics here I think are kind of funny, but I'm not sure if that's intentional or not, and I 
I chalk that up again to Juice's delivery, the way he sings. I'm not sure if this song is completely serious. Juice has been known to inject some humor into his otherwise pretty sad music. I don't know, man. This one's a strange one. Not sure what to make of it on first impression. Tell me you love me. Tell me everything gonna be okay. Tell me okay, so Tell Me You Love Me featuring Trippy Red. It's the first feature we're hearing on the album. And already this song feels pretty out of place. You can definitely tell that this one was made for the radio push, the promotional push. It's a little more up-tempo, a hook that they just like repeat over and over and over. Tell me you love me. I've never been a huge fan of Trippy and what he brings to the table. I don't think anything really stands out here. Overall for both artists, this is kind of a weak track. It doesn't leave a strong impression with me, which isn't, that's not a good quality to have if you're a song that's supposed to be like on the charts and helping promote and push the album. So overall, I, I like this track, Hate the Other Side. I think that it's a great example of when features go right. <laughs> Kid Leroy and Polo G have some really compelling verses here, and I think Juice's hook really works too. This song's just about like living a, a gang life. Your whole life you're uh, in that environment. You're taught to just hate the other side, hate your enemies. Uh, it's a really contemplative and very realistic and convincing portrayal of that. The only thing I don't like about this track is the beat. Marshmallow's production on this is so uh, lazy. <laughs> It's just like hi-hat and snap track. That's basically all it is. And it's just like, even for a simple trap production, which I wouldn't expect like Aces from Marshmallow, he's kind of all over the place in terms of production. I wouldn't expect like top grade trap production from this guy or anything. But even for him, this is a bad beat. And I think it kind of takes the song down a peg or two. But other than that, this is a pretty good song with some good features. Okay, so this track, Life's a Mess with Halsey, uh, what can I say? <laughs> it didn't leave any impression on me. I don't really think it's a very strong track at all. I don't think Halsey brought much to it. She has like a little outro there at the end, and she does some background vocals with the hook. But other than that, her presence isn't really felt here. This is more or less a Juice World song, but I wouldn't say it's a very strong one. The lyrics are kind of all over the place a little bit, which Juice World has been known to do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what else to say about this one. I didn't really enjoy it and think uh, it could have been left off the album, frankly. I don't think it's very strong. I don't want to ruin this one. This type of love don't always come. Okay, come and go with production from Marshmallow again. And this is the type of production I think that Marshmallow is better known for and this is where he really shines. I don't think we've ever heard Juice World on a song like this really upbeat guitar, kind of pop punk and big EDM drop. I kind of have mixed opinions on this because I love the production here. I'm a big fan of this sound from Marshmello and I think he's really strong when he's doing it. Juice World makes sense on this track that it doesn't feel kind of forced. At the same time, this is one of those songs with a feature on a posthumous album that you kind of get the sense that this wasn't complete and they brought in a producer to complete it so it becomes more of the producer's song than the artist's song. And of course the artist isn't around to uh, contribute any more than he already has. So you're left with something like this. I'm not sure if it works 100%, but I like the song. I think it shakes up the sound of the album a little bit, which halfway through I think it's something that is definitely needed. Especially with that last track with Halsey, I was getting kind of bored. The second one to feature Marshmallow, way better than the first one. So as you get through a long trap pop album like this, where pretty much every song has the same motif, sound, style, and lyrical content, you start to like try to find the subtleties and the differences in between each. I would say that this song, Juice's lyrics are, this is the love song of the album. It's supposed to be the sexy, romantic type song with Juice. His vocals are more whispery. Uh, it sounds kind of weird. I don't think the hook is very strong here. I think this song just kind of blends in. It's like background music a little bit, which is not a good thing. 
Yeah, I run away in fear of me dying. So I just noticed that the rest of the album uh, doesn't have any features, so it's all straight Juice World from here on out. Uh, this track, Fighting Demons, I think is a highlight for sure. It's just a great example of Juice World at his peak form, delivering really strong lyrical content here. Great examples of the type of stuff that Juice uh, typically talks about in his music, but he switches it up here a lot. I think his vocal delivery is great. I think that the hook here is very strong. So for me, this, especially late in the album, this is a definite highlight. Fighting Demons, really good song. Waiting for the exhale. This song, Wishing Well, you can really hear the in influence of emo that Juice World has talked about uh, growing up listening to, from the piano line to the production to his vocal delivery. Wishing Well, I say, is also uh, the first time in the album that really I'm listening to the lyrics and you think about what they're saying and ultimately what happened to Juice, and it's it makes the album very sad, very poignant. He does a great job here conveying that he is dependent on pills to get through his depression, his anxiety, but he also is recognizing that if he continues down that road, he will spiral and it won't be a good ending for him. He talks about just pretending he's okay so people won't worry about him. He talks about dealing with depression and addiction simultaneously. There's some great imagery here about how there's pressure on his shoulders like an anvil. Uh, the pills are killing me softly, referencing Lauren Hill. Strong lyrical content in this song. And like I said, the emo influence is definitely there. I would have put this closer to the front of the album. I think it's a, an immediate highlight for the album, for sure. I'm a Okay, next track, Screw Juice. I would say this is one of those songs that you could have just left, I think, on the cutting room floor. I don't think it really fits here with the album, especially with the strong batch of later tracks that we've been hearing so far. I think it's pretty generic, Juice World, which you're going to run into songs like that with any artist, just songs that you know they're from them, but there's nothing remarkable or vital about them, and I think Screw Juice falls into that category. It was hard not to daydream through this song, to be honest with you. We're running into an issue that most trap rap albums suffer from, which is that there's too many songs, they're too beefed up and bloated by the record labels and the people that put them together in order to get those streaming numbers up, and I think tracks like Screw Juice are a great example of stuff that you didn't have to have it on the album. It would have been a stronger album without it. The thing that stands out with Up, Up, and Away for me is Juice World. the way he says Up, Up, and Away, and kind of the way his vocals sound, it, it feels a little bit more um, like a dreamy, like you're kind of like you're floating on a cloud, I guess. I'm not articulating this very good, but the other thing is that it has this plucky acoustic guitar as part of the production behind it. But again, this is definitely a filler track for me. I'm not really overall impressed with the song. The refrain wasn't very memorable, and it didn't really leave a strong impression on me overall. Uh, this interlude that shows up here near the end of the album, The Man, The Myth, The Legend, it's really cool to hear all these sound clips of uh, Juice's peers talking about just what a marvel he was, what a talent he was, how he could freestyle like nobody else, how he could put hits together just sitting in the booth and put a hit song together in three, four minutes and do that like over and over and over, back to back to back like that. At the same time, putting this interlude in this album is kind of a forced way of trying to sell the narrative that Juice was talented. We can hear, we have ears, we can hear very clearly that Juice was talented, that he was a remarkable and prolific songwriter and lyricist. I don't think we necessarily need this compilation of people talking about how he was like Biggie. You don't hear any posthumous Biggie albums with people with sound clips being like, oh, Biggie was the best. We all know Biggie was one of the best because we let the music speak for itself. And case in point, the next song, uh, Stay High is an absolute banger, an immediate highlight on this album. 
some of Juice's best lyrics through the whole thing. The beat is strong. This is a proper, badass, hit Juice World song. And it just goes to show that even though it's true, you don't really need to say it. So whoever put together this album and thought that interlude was a good idea, I appreciate the sentiment, but I don't think it needs to be said. Let Juice speak for himself and let him show the world, even after death, just how incredibly talented he was. Sometimes I feel like I can't die because I never was alive. This song, Can't Die, near the end of the album here, is another one of those songs that's even more poignant now that Juice has passed. He's talking about how he feels he can't die because maybe he never was alive. He's hearing in the news about people dying all the time and he wishes it was a lie. Just this really contemplative and somber delivery about losing peers in the industry and losing friends and wondering if that despair will ever end. And then of course the irony here is that we lost Juice too. That's kind of what this song is about. I think the production goes well with it. I think it's another strong song here near the tail end of the album. Man of the year, still got problems. Looking in the mirror, you look on. And this last track, uh, Man of the Year, uh, again, another great example of Juice and his emo and pop punk influences when he was a kid. This one has is really a beat. There's a lot of humor in it. His humor really shines through. An optimistic, great way to end the album pretty uplifting and he's grateful for his fans and he is he knows that his lyrics have helped people along the way which is very true so i think it's a pretty stellar way to end the album so my impression of the album overall is that the the voice is here it's clear that compared to other posthumous rap albums in recent years uh, that are feature heavy and feature loaded and have a lot of unfinished works on them this isn't the case here. This feels like a very cohesive Juice World album, and it sounds like it was made by Juice World, even though that technically isn't the case. This was made after he died. They limit the amount of features here. They keep them towards the middle of the album. So I think taken as a whole, we don't have to necessarily think about this album as a posthumous Juice World album and give it the graded curve or anything. We can just talk about it like it's a Juice World album, which we've We've heard a few of those before. It's one of his stronger ones, but it does suffer a bit from the flaws that other Juice World albums have in the past, which is to say that there's a lot of filler, there's a lot of bloat here. Not as much as I thought there was going to be going in, so I'm pleasantly surprised about that. Also, most of the features here work. A couple of them don't, and that's okay. With an album like this, one, it being a trap rap album that they've put too many tracks on so they can score big on Spotify or whatever. And also that it's a posthumous album, which is to say that maybe the artist didn't 100% have creative control over the output here. Given those things in mind, this is pretty strong. So I'm going to, initially, I'm going to give it a six or even a seven. And yeah, those are my thoughts on Juice World Legends Never Die. Uh, what did you think of the album? Let me know in the comments below. If you like the video, please like it. Hit that thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel. You'll see more videos like this with uh, me and my crazy quarantine hair. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.